uh, with The Guardian. I'm Ricky Gervais. Hello. With me, Stephen Merchant. Hello. Uh, and Carl Pilkington. All right. So, thank you again for all your emails. Um, we're getting thousands. We, we're up to about a quarter of a million hits a week now, people listening to this show. Blimey. A quarter of a million people bothering to go in and listen to this show. Nothing else in their lives. Nothing all around the world. To do. It's unbelievable, though. North America, uh, Asia, South America, all over Europe, um, and, uh, and thanks to everyone in England as well, um, where we do it from in a little room in London. Keep going to rickygervais.com and registering, uh, cause so when we finish these 12, we can email you when we come back and start again. We're gonna need a, a little bit of time off to, um, record the second series of extras. Well, I'll tell you more than that, Rick. You're going to need some time off just to have a little breather, because I know how hard you work. Uh, and, and you, mate. Well, thanks, mate. But, I mean, you blinking work hard. But and Carl's been on holiday again, hasn't he? Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, because, Carl, you, you don't do anything. And you have weekends off. You take at least five or six weeks holiday a year, even though you haven't got a job now. You're meant to be doing this. And yet you still so go on holiday. So your whole life's a holiday, basically. Yeah, why do you need a holiday? to You, you, you potter around. Cause you, it, you, your, big, your big day last week was going to the cobblers. So... Why do you need a break so much this oh, week? It's, it's just that, you know, it's it's good for your brain and that, isn't it? It's, it's, it opens well, it up a bit. You are not evidence for that. Where did you go? Grand Canary. For a week? Yeah. Just sitting around? Um, well, there isn't much else to do at Grand Canary. I mean, I don't want to go slagging a place off because every time I seem to talk about somewhere, I get into trouble for it. Right. But it's just a like a big rock. It's Brilliant. just vol volcanic, isn't it? It's and you must have looked like a, a little barnacle on that. Have you been there before? Um, been been near it before to another rock, which was just. But it what was you the same had your fingers Why did you go back? Because you think, well, they can't have loads of these islands that are the same, like just a big rock with hotels on. They can't get away with it. So you <laughs> think <laughs> they well, obviously the next are getting away with it. <laughs> but why why do you keep going to these places that are rocks? Why don't you investigate first? Ask your travel agent. Is this a giant rock? Because because that's what you do, isn't it? You go and find out yourself. I mean, <laughs> when when Armstrong went to the moon, what was he expecting up there? That's a fact that it's a big rock. And he still went all that way. <laughs> I don't so, know what so, that point was. No, so, what, so what I'm saying is, though, sometimes... It, tell, it, us about it, the, tell us about the moon landing. What, as you started it, what do you know about that? You know, because, I mean, so far you've given us a lot of insight into into the uh, the moon landing. So there was Armstrong. There was, uh, there was Armstrong and that. Yeah. There was, um, a fella called Buzz. Yeah. And another bloke. Yeah. Poor bastard. Yeah, never remembered. <laughs> yeah, go on. And, uh, they went up there, got out, two of them did. One of them didn't bother. The one whose name, don't know who he was. Didn't even get out to stretch his legs right. Went all that way. They had a potter about, had a wander, came back again. Yeah. So, that's all you need to know, isn't it? Yeah. But and in your opinion, pointless? Um, to me, yeah. But to them, I'm sure they had a good time, and that's what I'm saying. Sometimes you just take the risk, don't you? Go and visit a place. Make up your own mind. And so you, what do you make of this place? you enjoy it, Grand Canaria? It was just a big rock, but did you... you I bet you... the moon was better. Really? <laughs> what did you do? It was just, uh, you know, it's one of them, it's big hotel, which is, um, that's where I made a mistake. It was one of those, like, big, massive places where there's loads of people and, you know, you go for your dinner. That describes a hotel. Yeah. No, no, no. no. You've nailed that. But I've the, been to a few, that sounds like it. No, but, <laughs> do, you know, do you know what I mean, though? There's the sort, there's the nice small ones where mm. it's just enough people, but this is, like, mental. And, and it was all, it was, it was full of old people, really. Ugh. I mean, that's, that's probably why it's called Grand Canaria, right? Because there's just Grand old people. Everywhere. Yeah, yeah, right. But what I thought I'd start doing is, uh, start a diary. Okay, why? Just because... I, I sort of had a bit of time on my hands and that. Just thought, write it down, write write stuff down. And do you I, hope that this one day will become one of the great literary documents like Samuel Pepys' diary? Um, I haven't heard of that. Is it any good? <laughs> You've never heard of Samuel Pepys' diary? No, the, the, the most the, famous diary uh, other than probably Anne Frank's. I've heard of Anne Frank's and that, and I thought if she's sat in a you know a loft, knocking stuff up. Not much going on in her life at that point, yet sure. she was still writing it down. Yeah, whereas you've been to Grand Canaria, yeah. I thought, so there is stuff going on that I can chat about. Start a diary. Sure. You started a diary? Yeah. And what are you going to do? You, did you did you keep it up every day? Yeah, just, uh Oh, can I read it, please? Well, a diary is meant to be sort can, of... Uh, please, can I read some out on this podcast? I... Carl! Some of it, though, is only relevant to me. It's sort of... Oh, going... this is... Please, give me it. Oh my god. I mean, this isn't- I haven't just- Look how big it 
is. <laughs> it's oh one of those desk diaries. It's huge. It's about a foot long. And it's ma- Oh, that is amazing. Imagine if Anne Franks had been like that. As she got out, <laughs> Right. Uh, uh, everyone would have heard it clank down on the desk. Yeah, but my writing's quite big, isn't it? Oh, look! Give us oh, that. Do give you us know, that. Do you know about joined up writing? Have you this heard about is that? No amazing. Point. Sometimes you can't read it, can you? So it's right, best to okay. look at Oh, at, look! At oh, look oh my God! It starts on the first day. This is this is wonderful. Going on holiday to Grand Canaria today. Woke up to the news that Tony Banks had died. There was a piece of on the news about how everyone was shocked. Got me thinking about an invention that would be good. Right, a, a watch. That counted down your life. If it says you've got three days left, <laughs> go to the doctors. <laughs> <laughs> Told Suzanne about invention. She said she wouldn't buy one. But she said that about the iPod. How, uh, and how would this device work, this watch? I mean, how would you, uh, how would you know when you were about to die? Have you, is that a concern? Again, not for you to worry about, presumably the boffins. And the no, all I was thinking is that Tony Banks fella, you know, he died and everyone was shocked about it. But if you had like a little watch on. But how does it, well, you can't just say, wouldn't it be good? How, how would this work? Yeah, um, I imagine you in the patent office going, got an idea. They go, oh, certainly, yeah, Mr. Bogdan, what's your idea? Watch that counting down your life. Oh, how does that work? Just, just wear well, it, just pop it on your wrist. No, 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 what do you mean, just pop it on your wrist? How does it work? Just pop it on your wrist. Brilliant. You're an idiot. Well, it's interesting that he goes on. The flight to Gran Canaria was a bit bumpy. I thought about the clock that counts down your life again, and I wondered if it would know if you were going to die in a disaster. <laughs> uh, no, <laughs> he's querying his own, his own design. He's wondering yeah. if he would know. He's invented this. He's invented it, and now he's <laughs> saving shot. Uh, a fella on the plane was reading Koi Mag. It was a fishing magazine. I glanced over and noticed he was reading the Pond of the Month article. <laughs> Don't think they could make it into a weekly magazine. Well, to be fair to you, I because re I remember seeing a guy on the train once reading Carp Monthly, yeah. a magazine do dedicated entirely to carp, and it had it had Carp of the Month, and I just thought, you know, once you're like three months in, the editor must be stressing. Have we got any more carp? Have we got a carp that's actually done anything? That's I reckon if they used the same one twice, there wouldn't be many complaints. No one would be noticing. No, that, well, that's the carp they used two years ago. There was a really fat bloke on the plane. He yeah. was playing on his PSP while I waited to go to the toilet. I looked at what game he was playing. It was darts. He's that fat and lazy, he can't even face playing a more active game on a games console. <laughs> Me and Suzanne got off the coach along with a couple of old people. One of them was in a wheelchair. I don't think it was wise of them to come to a volcanic island with a wheelchair. <laughs> Everywhere's pretty rough, paving and slopey. Guess I'll keep an eye on it as the weeks go on. Day two in Gran Canaria. Brilliant, we're only at day two. The hotel's a bit odd. I've never seen as many cross-eyed people in one location. <laughs> that's oh, enough, isn't it? That's amazing! Well, you may right. as well let me read on a bit more. But this is amazing. Well, look, come back this to is a brilliant now. diary. This might be the best diary ever written. Oh. While sat listening to the kinks on my iPod, I wondered if everybody thinks in their accent. I know I do. What's, what's this? What are you talking about? Just, just that, uh... You know, when I when I've been sat there lying on the lounger, right? And I was thinking about stuff. <laughs> How do you know you think in your accent? Tell me a typical thought. Because because what I mean is say say if I was like if I saw something, right? Do you know how I say like, Oh, that's a bit weird, isn't it? That, <laughs> no, but that was I being don't have said. to but in I, when you think, I don't think the sentence is like I'm saying it. It's just a thought, the thought appears, it's conceptual and it's already there. It's not like um I go, Rick, what? Just, uh, looking at a fellow over there, were you? Yeah, I was, yeah. Um, I was thinking it looks a bit weird. Oh, so was I. I don't, I don't think out whole sentences. Whereas you have, Carl, <laughs> Carl, li Carl, stop listening to the kinks for a minute. Look over there. More, more cross-eyed people. <laughs> no, well that's, yeah, that's Is that how your of, mind works? In a way, yeah. And Brilliant. that's when, it, because, because <laughs> that I thought- That explains a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it's great that he has to think about whole sentences. Cause I thought, that's weird, isn't it? Like, I didn't think, that's weird, isn't it? And I thought, no. I actually think in my accent. And then I thought, does Stephen Hawking, does he, when he's doing his maths and that, mm. is he, I don't know where he's from, so I don't know what his accent would be like. I think he's from, uh, Kent or Cambridge or Oxford right. or something. Right, so... So you think he might think in his... In, in his, his voice, in that, yeah. in that voice In computerised voice. Just wondered. Had lunch inside today due to shite weather. Sat next to an old fella. Old men's ears and noses carry on growing as they get older. Suzanne noticed his fingers were fat too. Maybe they continued to grow. Suzanne didn't laugh when I said her arse had the same problem. <laughs>
Day three, cloudy start to the day. Had pie and chips in a cafe. Had a bit of an argument with Suzanne because I thought it was daft that we were paying for food when we were on an all-inclusive holiday. Changed my mind when I saw the... They sold pie, though. (laughs) The cafe was called Tattoos. The fellow who owned it didn't have any tattoos. But we never saw his wife. (laughs) 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 Oh, brilliant. Had a drink in a bar. Everyone sat and watched one of the local cats lick its bollocks. (laughs) (laughs) It's the greatest holiday in the world! Uh, That's the entertainment in that town. Went back to the hotel and had a sleep before tea. I love the fact you're like, you're moaning about old people, but you're just as bad. <laughs> he's done nothing so far. <laughs> he's done nothing, he's got a hip. <laughs> oh, God, God. Uh, uh. Woke up to news about ducks being badly treated. There was a really ugly one with bent legs. <laughs> I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die. Why does he write this down? Oh, God. Oh. There is a fat bloke from Bolton who is in the pool as I write this. He's got a big tattoo on his back, but I can't work out what it is. Dot, dot, dot. He just got out of the pool and burped. You just felt like you had to keep us abreast of that. <laughs> Everything's in the diary. i just seen it get to the point where you're going, breathed in, <laughs> yeah, breathed out again. There was a big fat fella in the sea who kept his T-shirt on. If you're big and fat, is there more chance of you getting burnt because there's more of you on show? I asked Suzanne, and she said she didn't know in that sort of not listening kind of way. <laughs> I wanted to hang about to see if the fat bloke was going to get in the kayak. <laughs> but Suzanne, <laughs> Suzanne said we had a head back. <laughs> Just let him wait in to see if he's going <laughs> to capsize. <laughs> we go home today, so we got up early to get the last bit of cloud. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's just that it wasn't, uh, it, it's, it's not that sunny all the time. I mean, I, I was sat in, in weather that, if it was like that here, there's no way I'd be sat in the garden. <laughs> yeah. But because you're on holiday, it's like, well, we've got to sit in it, put your coat on. So are you going to continue to write this diary? Every yeah, single day? It's amazing. Keep this diary up. It's no, amazing. I, I, no, I will, I will keep it up, because what I find as well is, I think earlier on, before I went away, I think I did learn something. And because I wrote it down, I, I remembered it a bit um, better. So what was that? I just was thinking then. I forgot it now, but <laughs> <laughs> but I remembered looking back at it and not having to read it all because I remembered the end of it before I read it. If you know what I mean. <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. Well, if you've enjoyed uh, um, the diary of Carl Pilkington, um, more next week, I hope. Another week's worth. That's amazing. I'm going to try and get that published. We'll put the, uh, the odd page up on the uh, web. Go to rickygervais.com. Don't forget to register there as well so we can email you and let you know uh, what's happening. Brilliant. The Ricky Gervais Show on Guardian Unlimited. Rick, who hosts this podcast? The guys at Positive Internet. Why? Now, you, I know you're a big fan of those guys. Yeah, because they're brilliant. Well, they are, and they tell you they're working overtime. Because we've had an email from Jake, who's the director at Positive Internet, and apparently he's been in touch with uh, the editor of the Guinness World Records book. All right. Um, and he's hoping to see if we can get this podcast in the uh, Guinness World Record Breaking section, or the podcast World Record Record Breaking section, or whatever they call it. I don't know exactly what record we'd have broken. I assume it's just sheer number of listeners, is it? Or, or yeah, with the number yeah, one? it's the number one podcast, and it's the biggest downloaded show ever at the moment. Right. Um, I think that's because people have only had podcasts for a couple of years. Yes, well, I don't know. I mean, I don't know when the next issue comes out. I guess it's sort of December time. I used to get the Guinness Book of Records every year. I, I, I love it. I've never understood why it was such a big seller. I mean, presumably, who's excited to find out whether you know? I don't know. A man that can balance three egg cups on his head has beaten the record. Well, the they're real year. records as well. Obviously, I, I used to go straight for that. I really loved the sort of uh, animals fastest, strongest, all that sort of thing, biggest. But aren't they the same every year? Well, well, no, they do change, and obviously there's there's new entries to to keep it exciting. Um, but what annoys me is that you, I, it looks like anyone can get in if you're willing to do something that no one else will bother with. Yeah, I, I, they did one on Big Brother where it was the. Um, uh, stacking sugar cubes. And I was mm. thinking, well, no one's going to bother beating that. No. There's people that, um, uh, walk along with a milk bottle on their head. And no one's going, oh, I'm a bit jealous of Bill. Why? He's broken the record. What? For walking along with a milk bottle on his head? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to go into training tomorrow. They're ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, but I do like the, you know, the, the real ones. There was one in there I, I got on a couple of years ago. And, uh, it was about, um, uh, disasters. 
And there was one where there was some um, big ornamental incense burners at this thing in, um, I think, uh, Thailand or, or Korea or somewhere. And uh, they fell over and they killed seven of the congregation. And the headline was Biggest Jostic Disaster. <laughs> now, again, there's no one trying to beat no. that. There's no one going, we need eight. Yeah. We need eight people. We're going for it tonight. Uh, what do I have to do? You have to stand quite near those big joysticks. Okay. And okay. what record am I breaking again? Um, <laughs> we'll tell you after. Also, I think a lot of people waste their energy on this because there's one guy in there that can do the 100 metres in 11 seconds running backwards. And I want to say to him, turn round. Because I think you'd be fast forwards. You know, yeah, if you'd have only, yeah. from the age of 10, sort of, you, you, you might be... You know, one of the fastest runners in the world. Because you're never going to be considered one of the great athletes for doing that. No backwards. one knows about him. That's not going to ever be an Olympic sport, no. running backwards. No. Or, uh, well, um, and now they're meters. Oh, one of them's putting a milk bottle on his head. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is one to watch. There yeah. was a guy in there, um, I've always been fascinated by the guy. He had, um, the world's longest fingernails. And they were truly extraordinary. And they, and they, they, they went out and they started to curl around, obviously. And in the end, they almost looked like sort of a, you know, there was a big spiral of right. gnarled old fingernail. But I just thought, it just seemed like such a terrible affliction, really, to be walking around, you know, with, with these giant fingernails. Well, so much you can't do. Just missing out on, you know, Jeff, you come in bowling? I can't. You yeah. know, just so many different things that you've been I've never quite understood who's willing to, to have this eat into their life. You know, it's going to take over their whole life just so they can have their photo in this book. It seems a very bizarre impulse. Carl, have you ever been tempted by any, any world breaking attempts? Do you find them fascinating or futile? Um, I mean, you don't get, you don't get paid or anything, do you? No. They and do it for the pride. Well, say like the fella who can run with a milk bottle, could he, could he get a milk round? Um, <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I, I, I can understand that if if you can use the skill, yeah. but like you say, if it's a uh, if it's getting in the way of your life and that, then what, what's the point? There was yeah. a kid at school who said, I've, "I'm in the Guinness Book of Records." And I went, "Oh yeah, yeah, yeah." He said, "No, I am, I am, I am." And he brought it in, and it. Now I don't know if this is a valid claim. He, he claimed to have been in the audience for what, in this particular edition, was labelled, you know, the largest audience ever for a sporting event, some giant Super Bowl game in America, oh, and right. he claimed to have been in the audience. Now, does that, does, do you think he, he, he deserves to say he's in the Guinness Book of Records? Just well, as, mm. sort of. I, I think that's a lot. As it was the largest audience ever, I think a lot of people can claim yeah. that one. I mean... If I he think... wanted to get a name check on doing that, he would have been best saying, I was sat in the audience in a bath of beans. <laughs> because <laughs> yeah. then that, that would <laughs> yeah. add to, the, yeah. to it, and yeah. you get a little, you know, they'd have you in the picture, wouldn't they? <laughs> so... <laughs> he's Mr. Trick, that way. Yeah. The Ricky Gervais Show, on Guardian Unlimited. Harry from Canterbury wants to know whether any of us have ever had any cruel nicknames. Um, he claims that he's uh, quite tall and rather hirsute, and he says he's often called Lurch or Wolfy. Um, he's always thought that Carl looks a bit like Mr Potato Head. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, no, there's no potato that round, but... Um... I suppose you could fashion a potato to be that round. <laughs> yeah. Maybe we could, if anyone can uh, carve a potato into the roundest head ever, <laughs> yeah. pop a couple of eyes on it. Make um, it look as much like Carl as possible. Exactly. But yeah, did any nicknames? Did you ever have a nickname, uh, Rick? No, mine was boring. I didn't have any. It was just around the name, like Jerv or something like that. No, I didn't have nicknames. I always wanted a nickname. Um, I just thought it was quite cool for some reason, particularly because gangsters always seem to have nicknames. Lefty. You know, fingers. Yeah. Lefty, yeah. Uh, Scarface. Yeah. And so I, I decided that I thought, because no one was giving me a nickname at school, it was kind of annoying, or certainly not to my face, yeah. that I decided to just come up with one. Yeah. And so I went, I remember I was at lunch once, and I just said to my mate Phil. How old were you? Uh, 12, 13. Brilliant. I just said to him, uh, Phil, um, don't know if you know, mate, but um, people aren't calling me Steve anymore. Everyone's, everyone's calling me Spud now. Now, I don't know why I thought Spud, it's weird we should talk about Mr. Potato Head, I don't know why I thought Spud was a, was a cool nickname, I just sort of, I think it's, it's a grown up name though, isn't it? And it's also because I think it sounded like, uh, it, it was probably either something that you'd find in one of those kids books, like the Famous Five, or like the Bash Street Kids, they'd be Spud, and I always imagine with Spud, he's not the leader of the gang, but he's a reliable member. I think you know Spud I mean? is the biggest lorry driver in one yeah. particular sort of uh, car park, Yeah, here comes Spud. Yeah. And he gets out, all right, boys. And he's big and massive. And he, a Spud can eat two breakfasts. <laughs> exactly, yeah. But I just, in my mind, it was, yeah, that I would be one day part of a gang. And it's, I'm Pinky, this is Joe Joe, and the tall guy Spud. And you know, catch on, never really it? caught. And he just went, oh, yeah, right. And no one started. And I was hoping he'd go, you know, everyone's calling Steve Spud. 
Yeah. But of course- Hey, Spud. The first time I said Spud, you go, what? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You'd be really proud, wouldn't you? <laughs> but, um, but I think that it, it, it kind of, actually in a way, it probably revealed that I just was probably not in people's thoughts enough. To, to get to get for the nickname to catch on, you know, because you sort of yeah, need I, to be a real player in the I school. I think you should have gone something more memorable. I mean, I'm not saying in dog load freak or anything. What? Uh, what? No, no, just uh, well, no, no, it's good, no, it's good advice, fatty. <laughs> Fatty, fatty pot That's belly. the problem. I wasn't fat at school, and I suppose Carl didn't have a round bald head at school, did you? Uh, what, no. You, no. <laughs> did you have a nickname? Um, <laughs> not not really. I mean, there was a lot of people on the estate that I grew up on. You know, nicknames are, are big things on estates and that. Yeah. Um, a lot of my dad's mates, right? What what their nicknames did was tell you about them. Do you know how I said about the Elephant Man's a good name? Yeah. Because, like, you know what you're going to get. If someone said, Elephant Man's popping around in a bit, it wouldn't <laughs> be a shock when he walked in. <laughs> yeah. Right? <laughs> so so it, was, it worked in that sort of uh, sort of thing. You know, so there was, uh, there was John the Screw, right? John the Screw? Yeah. Whether he had sex or not or he worked in a prison? No, he had a DIY shop. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you had him, right? right? There was uh, <laughs> there was Fred the Veg. Yeah, which is yeah. I assume it's because he was at the same IQ as you, yeah. or, or or he was in a coma. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> right. There was there was uh, there was my uncle Tattoo Stan. All oh, right. right. Yeah, he had he had like loads of tattoos that he'd just done himself. Oh my right. God! The the problem was because he did his tattoos himself. <laughs> the ones on his left arm were really good because <laughs> he was right-handed. On his right arm, rubbish. Right? Um, so so there was him. Uh, great. And there was um, Jimmy the Hat. Who, Jimmy the Hat. Yeah. Did and he that, always wear a hat? No, he didn't. That that's that was the point there. That he he never wore a hat. That's amazing. <laughs> Brilliant. How can you pick up on someone never wearing a hat? How would you ever notice? I'll tell you what, I've noticed something about Jimmy. What? Go on. He doesn't wear a hat. <laughs> why, why was he not called Jimmy the Parrot? Because he, he never carries a parrot. <laughs> no, well, <laughs> that's just the way, I mean, that's how they work, isn't it? I mean, it, it that, that, here comes Jimmy Three Legs. Why'd you call him that? He hasn't got three legs. I didn't really have one apart from, um, like, I had a CB. You know, like when you'd go on a CB radio and have a chat to people. Oh, this was a craze in the, uh, was it late 70s, early 80s? Early 80s. And, uh, it was just short band radio, wasn't it? Everyone had these little handsets and they'd speak to each other in the sort of local area. Yeah, it was mainly, I think it started off with like Lorry drivers, isn't it? Yeah, truckers, yeah. Because there was that, that thing from like about 1970, whatever it was, Convoy, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so so I had one of them and my handle, I had, I had two handle different Handle means your nickname, your yeah, name. Yeah, there's loads of code, code stuff. Yeah. Um, I had, I had a couple, I had, um, there was Pilkey 01, because right. like I said, there's a lot of Pilkingtons and that. In Manchester, so I just thought, give it a number. If someone wants Pilkey O2, it's open. Do you know what I mean? They can have it. And then, um. <laughs> that, is, that is people scrabbling for, oh, I, want yeah. Pil- <laughs> I want a Pilkey O1. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, because I did boxing and that. Well, you did it once. <laughs> yeah. Well, I had, uh, I had Boxer Boy. Because I thought that, that's quite a good image as well. That's kind of like people going, oh, don't mess with him. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. If he asks what your handle is, tell him. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's Boxer Boy and that. Yeah. So, just had them too, and I used to just go on there and. Pointless. What is the point of this? Well, you just you just meet people, don't you? And you so don't meet people. You say, "What's your handle?" You're a box boy. What's yours? Uh, uh, rubber duck. All right. Cheers. No, it's but ridiculous. then but then you'll say like, then you go, "Oh, uh, what's your twenty? What's that mean? That's where are you? Well, why don't you say where are you? Because just in case there's someone who's listening in who who you know you hear about this all the time, don't you? People listening, jotting stuff down. Oh, right. So, just in case someone in the world doesn't know what handle means, they're, they're out of the loop. They're yeah. out of the loop. It's hardly the, it's not a difficult code to crack, is it? Yeah. If you're trying to track someone. It's hardly the head of the mafia talking to each other because the FBI are on the wire. It's ridiculous. Like, I go, oh, you keep saying that, what's your handle? And they come back with something else. I, don't, <laughs> I can't work out what's going on. No, it's like, it's like anything, isn't it? That's what codes, that's what, you know, that's what codes are all about, isn't it? You, Set them up and that. Go on and tell me, tell me the code then. Reveal it long last to the world what yeah. these codes are. Right, so yeah. what's your 20? Where oh, are you? This is better than the Enigma. Yeah. Right, now here we go. Right. How many candles are you burning? Uh, does that mean how big's your car or something like that? Horsepower or something? See? No, that's not so Oh, old what are you? time is it? No, how old are you? What, how old are you? Okay. Right. right. Uh, how many candles are you burning, of course? Yeah. So what the, what's the answer come back? You go, uh... I'm 15. 14. Brilliant. 
That code, <laughs> that code, it, there's no one gonna work that out. There is no one gonna work that one out. So let's just play through this conversation. This is, is it, give us an example of how it worked. Right, so, um, so, y so, y you, you turn it on and that, and, and you start off, and, uh, there was something that you said at the start, like, uh, Hello! Just, do you break a breaker. Yeah, break a breaker, do you copy, or whatever. Yeah. Then someone will go. What does yeah. copy mean? No, what his me, name is. Because I want to hear the fascinating conversations that Carl must have had. Yeah. And you go, uh, alright, it's a uh, boxer boy, yeah? What's your goes, 20? What's your 20? And you go, well, just, uh, I'm in Manchester. In, in the flat. Oh, right. And you go, alright, yeah. How many candles are you burning? Mm. You go, oh, I'm 13. Oh. <laughs> so. And uh, that's the end, is it? Then you sort of, then you might sort of, uh, Say what? What? Uh, what was it? it was something like, "What? What am I burning?" Right. Using burning again. Confusing, but you're on. Yeah. What am I burning? <laughs> 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 the bacon, because I'm busy talking to you, you twat. That's like, what's my power? What? What? Uh, what strength am I coming in at? Oh yeah. Because then you can tell if they're quite close to you. So if you're yeah. getting someone burning a one. Well, you've told them. You said, "Wait, what's your twenty? You go, "I'm, I'm in Macclesfield Street." Yeah, but oh, then, right. But then you wonder go, where they are. We've just told you. <laughs> Yeah, I know but, far away they are. But then you go, oh, that's interesting, because uh, you're burning, f you know, burning three. I don't normally get a three. <laughs> this is <literally laughs> just the least interesting hobby oh, you, you know could what I, ever do. I wish you'd have kept a diary of this, because this has been fascinating. <laughs> now and again, someone will come in and go, uh, side on, right? What's that mean? And that means, like, there's someone sat there listening into this Ooh. chat and going, this sounds interesting. Yeah, no, it does Unlikely. <laughs> yeah. And they, they want to join in, so they sort of go, side on, you go, side on, bring it in, right? And they go, all right. <laughs> How many candles are you burning? <laughs> yeah. Once your that, 20. That's the only game. Yeah. <laughs> See you later. Once your 20. How many <laughs> yeah. candles are you burning? Oh. And, I mean, it seems to me that what you should have done is make, made a note the first time so that when you then speak to them again, you don't need to ask them those questions. <laughs> Can I just confirm that you're burning 15? <laughs> It's that time again. Do the jingle. Ow! Man, can you? Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> okay. Uh, I was gonna, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a really good one. Though. Okay, go. Okay. Oh! Chimpanzees are monkey news, you fucking... Right, do you know, it's it's nearly time for the Winter Olympics again. Okay. Is it? Okay. They sort of come round every four years. Is it this year, is it? Yeah. And, uh, the, the, the last one that happened... Four years ago, yeah. There was a, there was a bit of an incident. Oh, no. Oh, well, I'd know about this then, because it would be... Well, it'd be well, big news, because it's a, it's a well-known... Televised well -known as well. Yeah. yeah. It's, uh, Do you remember any winners that were monkeys? In any of the no, tournaments? of course no, not. No, so, yeah. so, so anyway... It's not going to be that, because it wouldn't be true. Oh, on. Yeah. So anyway, one one of the uh, popular events, um, bobsleigh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. <laughs> Yeah. Um, you know, it you know, it works. Well, you it's need like four men. Is it four men or five four men? men? It's four, yeah. so it's definitely four men that you need, need on four a men. team. Is it, and two, and there's two team bobsleighs. But well. they're always men, is that right, Rick? Well, that, well yeah, they have to be. Yeah. Anyway, human, so. Human, humans. Well, they have to be humans. Yeah, yeah it's okay. the Winter Olympics for. Yeah, so, 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 let me just clarify. With the Winter Olympics, you can't have any animals taking part. No, and they, and they also, well, no, because they, they wouldn't be allowed in two. There's no way they could disguise it, because not only would they see it straight away, right, but they have blood tests. <laughs> right, okay. So, which would show up. So they definitely know if it was well, a, blood a non -human. It's impossible. It would be literally impossible to have anything other than a human <laughs> involved part. in a bobsleigh team. Fine, okay, so carry on. So anyway, this, this country, I don't want to name them, because they try to shake off this, this sort of, you know, this bad news. Oh, yeah, and you don't know. And it's it not true. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, the, the the country was doing really well in the qualifying stages. Oh yeah. But the problem was there was there was like two members mm. who were getting all like the press and stuff. Oh right, yeah. And one of them never got a look in, right? How tall was he? <laughs> anyway, so this one member was getting fed up because the the other two were getting all the press and what have you. So he said, I, "I'm not happy with this. Yeah. I'm jacking it in." Oh. So they were like, "You're joking? We've we've qualified. We're getting into like the main." race and everything. Mm. You can't leave us now. And he said, well, you could do it all on your own before, you know, you, you, the way you were acting and that, you didn't yeah. need me, so I'm going. Mm. So they were like, oh. Well, they, they need to replace him because there's a certain amount of people needed. So, uh, so anyway, so the clock's ticking, it's getting close to the big race and everything. Of course it is, yeah. They're like, what, what are we going to do here? The substitute right? they took with them. What are they going to well, do? Have, yeah. yeah, they would take the substitute, so get no, in they didn't, they didn't, they didn't have any of them and that, it's, you know, a lot of injuries and stuff. Or just get a mate to do it, just get a mate or a friend yeah, or, or the coach to do it, yeah. But, you know, there's a lot of responsibility on these people and, you know, <sighs> you won't want to let your country down and that, and they're like, what are we going to do? Get a waiter or anyone anyway, in the Anyway, the time comes to the race, 
seems to be three people on it. There appears to be three, okay, yeah. Um, they start off, they're whizzing around the track faster than normal, they, they're beating their old records. <laughs> right, amazing. Because the new fella they've got, a little bit smaller. Ah! Oh, right? is, so, is he in the bobsleigh, or is he pushing? He's, he's in it. Oh, right, okay. Right. He's wearing a uniform and a helmet, though, we can't see what he looks on, like. He's got the kit face. on. Um, yeah. Nobody knows who he is, but the country's do. loving it. Of course they They're do. like, well, it looks like we're going to break all our records, you know. Good, it's good that they found someone new. Yeah. Bet the other fella who left is, is sort of kicking himself, thinking, oh, I could have been part of this. Anyway. This wasn't a bloke that had very short legs and long arms, was it? Anyway, what happened is, they're whizzing round the track and what have you. Faster than ever, yeah. Faster than ever, and the press are like going, beating all records here. They mm. started taking photographs. <gasps> Lot of flashing, lot of flashes from the cameras and stuff. Right, of course. Suddenly, the bobsleigh goes a bit sort of mental, and whizzes off, off the track, right, into like all the tyres and stuff that they have for protective. Oh, right? they love tyres, don't they, bobsleigh members? <laughs> some of them you can some uh, sometimes you can find them swinging in one, or maybe eating a banana. Ambulance comes rushing over and stuff. The other two members are looking pretty nervous for some reason. Mm. Oh, what are they doing? They're saying, look, um, don't take the helmet off because, you know, you can do more damage to the, the Well, neck. don't tell the paramedics how to do it. Uh, I mean, <laughs> they know their job. Yeah, they know yeah, their yeah, job. Yeah, yeah. Please, so they were like, yeah. just, just, you know, and plus, you know, he doesn't, he, he came in at last minute to help us out. He doesn't want everyone to know who he is. He's, yeah. he's not after the limelight. Yeah. Like some of the members we used to have, but he just, yeah. he just was helping his country out. Yeah. Leave the helmet on. Anyway, they get him in the ambulance and stuff. The other two are looking a bit worried and what have you. They're Ugh. gutted, they lost the race. The little bloke, is the bloke not saying anything? Is he not? He's, he's in the ambulance now. Is he not saying anything though? Anyway, word got out, right, from one of the ambulance mm. drivers a few weeks down the line, once all the dust had settled on the Olympics and stuff and mm. light news day and stuff. Yeah. Uh, it was reported that one of the ambulance drivers said that, that on that, on that sort of dreadful night when, you know, the country lost out on a medal in the bobsleigh, he sort of reported that there was a monkey in the back of the ambulance. People were like going, ah, oh, you're joking, I don't remember this, I don't remember this he, not, he, Well, this is it, you see, because they sort of swept it under the carpet oh, a little bit. Right. They were like, this Bullshit. is crazy talk, this. Bullshit. Bullshit again. This is Bullshit crazy again. talk. Once talk, absolute shit. Where'd you get this, this from? This is crazy talk, right? It is but, crazy talk, and it's from the mouth of Carl Pilkington. And, and, but the, but the weird thing is that backed it up, well, following week, um, there was a story of some people who visited the zoo, saw a chimp in a neck brace. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, that's this week's monkey news. Bollocks. Well, that's the end of another podcast. Um, thanks very much from me, Ricky Gervais, with me, Stephen Merchant. Uh, goodbye. And Carl Pilkington. Right. And thanks again to those guys at Positive Internet who host this podcast, the world's number one podcast. Um, we'd also like to congratulate Steve Carell from uh, the American office, um, who won a Golden Globe. Yes, well, congratulations, Steve, and obviously everyone involved with the American office. And um, <clears throat> for our American listeners, if you haven't checked out the American office on NBC, it's dynamite. It really is a cracking show. I don't know if you're a fan of the original, but if you are, or even if you're not, just watch it. It's great. It gets better and better week by week. It, it's, it's, absolutely, it's absolutely brilliant. That's uh, NBC. I think that's Thursday nights, isn't it? After My Name is Earl. That's got to be the first time a Golden Globe has been won by two different people for the same character. I think you're probably right, mate. Cheers. Hey, congratulations again for winning it all those years ago. Two. One, all right. two. I don't need to mention one, one two. Bye. The Ricky Gervais Show on Guardian Unlimited. Ricky Gervais Show on Guardian Unlimited. Hello and welcome to another Ricky Gervais Show with me, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant. Hello. And Carl Pilkington. All right. The ninth in a series of 12 podcasts we're doing for free. Absolutely free of charge. We're getting, um, we've, we've already done over sort of two and a half million downloads. We'll probably do four million downloads by the end of the series. If I had a quid. I oh. don't even want to discuss it, Rick. You are gutted, I'm aren't you? absolutely furious, because I said to you when we studied, I said, why, why, you were going, oh, let's give something free back to the fans, and I was saying, it's not worth it, they don't deserve it. 
<laughs> but no, you, you demanded it, and I wanted to did. pay. I want to. I want to charge crazy money. For I've it. been a fool. We've had about something like six thousand emails as well. If we could channel this to good, because you yeah. know what I mean, Every, this internet has been set up. Billions and billions and billions of dollars go f uh, on this uh, uh, um, cyber highway, back and forth, doing doing good stuff, communicating, sending people into space, commerce, and people, hundreds of thousands of people are sending me pictures of Carl as a monkey. I know, exactly. I mean, it's unbelievable. It's not what this this system was created for. Thank you for all your uh, emails as well. That costs us as well a little bit because they're going through the website, which costs us a little bit of money. But it also costs me my precious time <laughs> having to wade through the crap that gets sent to us. <laughs> Thanks to uh, uh, Kieran um, Gabriel from Merseyside who sent me a picture of uh, Carl as Bruce Willis. It's the effort. They're, we'll put all these up on the website. Um, David Weinstein has uh, started his own t-shirt range, I Could Eat a Knob at Night. And uh, Paul Devon has sent me this caricature of Carl and it's brilliant. Again, I think they're wasting their energies. It's actually a brilliant painting of a little round, bald-headed mank, some sort of, like, freak creature. Yeah. Whereas he could have done a beautiful painting, but but thanks to all those... I, uh, there's, I, I mean, I have actually waded through the emails, and I, obviously, again, like Ricky, I echo the thanks for sending in all the different questions and comments about the show. Um, and there's so many, it's impossible to obviously even reply to them or talk about them, but a couple of that have struck me. Uh, Emily from New York has asked uh, Carl this. Carl, if you were on a... a a sinking ship, or you were in a, a burning building, and you were with uh, myself and Ricky, but you could only save one of us. I don't know why that's the case, but you can only save one of us. Yeah. Who would you save? Would it Is be it Ricky, or would it be me? I think it's a two-man dinghy. Right, okay. Possibly. And we're, we're trapped, and he knows that if he stays there to get both our legs out from under this thing... <laughs> the girder. Yeah, he forms. dies, so he's got, so it's, he's got room, he's got time to save one. It's obviously me. Um, it's hard to say, isn't it, at this point? What, because Steve's situation. in the room, you mean? Well, no, just, <laughs> just because we, we don't know what, what the situation is. Okay, well, let's say we're on a, we're on a sinking ship, all right? So you're gonna have to rescue one of us, drag us into the dinghy. It's, it's going under. You know, you know, in 30 seconds, okay, this ship's gonna go under and drag you down and you're gonna die, right? Yeah. Uh, and our legs are trapped and you've got enough time to <laughs> untangle one set of legs. <laughs> Whose legs do you untangle? Now, just because my legs are long does not necessarily mean it's more complicated. No, it's exactly the same amount of time. Just have to make a choice. Terrible, a terrible choice that Steve would would not, um, you know, hate you for. Well, would, no, listen, this is going to be around for long. He's going to drown in thirty seconds. Well, we'll get him. <laughs> so, bear in mind this, Carl. You are going to be stuck in a dinghy with Ricky Gervais, and who knows how long that's going to take. Yeah. Think of all the head squeezing that's going to be going on, the comments, the winder. And do you honestly think that he's going to, if there's any provisions, that he's going to split them evenly with you? <laughs> I mean, he's going to have drunk all the water, and it's only going to be about half an hour in. The food's going to be gone. Look at his gut. Look how much, you know, of the, oh. of the food he's going to have to eat, the baked beans that you've got on board. Come or on. it's me. You know how generous I am. I'm always sort of oh, helping you Oh, there we out. go, Carl. He's, I think he's uh, put the nail in his own coffin there. You know how generous I am, Carl. Let's talk about that, Carl. Come on. Think about that one. Yeah, I mean, have, have you forgot about that, Steve? What? <laughs> what? The time, the time when... We went for a coffee, and we had to have a bit of a heated debate about the 50 pence change. <laughs> yeah, you owed me 50p, oh, and you it. decided you didn't want to give it to me, because it was only 50p. And mm. my point was, it's not a question of 50p, it's the fact that it's not your decision to decide not to give it to me. If I want to be generous, that's my decision. But you can't go, oh, it's only 50p, well, Steve. It's my decision, who But you just, the... you just given him a free keg of beer. Yeah. And uh, no, no, but yes, but that was, that did not come to you, and you didn't pay for the free keg of beer, it was a promotional thing that was sent to you. Matter. It's the same thing as the way I gave Suzanne my leaving present from my last job. A lot of people may not be aware of this if they haven't heard us talking about it before, yes, but you had a gift from your work as you were leaving after yeah. however many years of service, yeah. which you then gave straight to your girlfriend without telling her that it had been received from uh, people at work. Doesn't matter, she wanted a camera, it's the same thing as you. You wanted that lager that I got for free. It hasn't yeah. cost you anything. It doesn't matter where I got it from. So you now decide, because you've given me a free coat of lager, that you can now say, oh, actually, I'm not, uh, you know, in the future, I'll just take your money, Steve, on a whim. Well, uh, listen, I'm stop just... arguing us. You're rocking the dinghy. <laughs> Carl, <laughs> have some of my cheese. <laughs> you imagine if he would, do you imagine he would ever say that? Do you imagine him ever, ever offering you any of his cheese? Are you going to save, Carl, mate? I, I don't want to say. Can we say on the website? Can you just do a little explanation of why on the website? Can they... We we'll think about it, and I might do a sort of a, a for and against or something, and then sort of so the conclusion is okay. All right, something like that. Go all to right. RickyGervais.com. The Ricky Gervais Show on Guardian Unlimited. Well, I've been waiting for this for a week. Um, it's a regular feature now. 
when uh, we read from Carl's diary. Carl decided to keep a diary. He's gone through with it. I can see it there. It's massive. It's a huge desk diary that he has to carry around uh, with him. And uh, he, uh, is, is the pages are getting full up. Are you, you're really keeping to this. Yeah. Right, it, this is uh, extracts from Carl's diary. Did podcast and went for an Italian with Ricky and Steve. Italian place is good. We've been there a few times. I always have the same thing, spaghetti. Can't remember what everyone else had. Last time we went there, Steve had little octopuses with pasta. You could see that they were octopuses. They hadn't been cut up or anything. My rule is that I only eat stuff that looks nice when it's alive. <laughs> <laughs> a cow, a chicken, some fish. An octopus is an odd-looking thing alive. Even worse when it's dead and limp. It looks like it just shouldn't have been sat in the spaghetti. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I agree with that. <laughs> Ricky drew another picture of my head. We've given a few of them away as prizes, but he draws so many of them that they won't be worth as much anymore. <laughs> Everyone will eventually have one. Like those pictures of a boy crying that caused houses to burn down in the 1980s. What does that mean? What are you talking about? Don't you remember the... I mean, if you're listening in America, they might not have made it over there. Is it the, what, the, the, what, the sort of, like, the sugary ones with kids? Like, is it Techikov or something? It's just some kid. Uh, my auntie Nora had one, and it was just, like, a kid with, like, a blue jumper on, and he's, it's like a painting, not a photo. Yeah, exactly, yeah. And he's just crying. Like a chocolate box, really awful sort of sugary. And what happened is it, they found out that a load of houses were being set on fire or burst into flames, whatever, and the weird thing was... Oh, it's bollocks. Every house that burnt down had that photo. Yeah, because every house had that picture in the <laughs> fucking 70s and 80s. <laughs> Idiot. It's like, we're linking it to sinks. Every house that's ever burnt down had a sink. <laughs> You're talking shit mm. again. Mm. Carry on. Wednesday. Saw a homeless bloke. I'm surprised that no companies have thought about sponsoring the homeless. Something like a clothing company. Give them some clothes that have an advert on the back. Everyone's a winner. Good idea. Not bad, is it? Got on the tube to Camden. Read in a free newspaper that hedgehogs could be gone by 2025. I think I've seen more dead hedgehogs than alive ones anyway, so I don't think I'll miss them. <laughs> Went round to Ricky's house and had a game of pool. It should have been nice and relaxing, but Jane gave me some cake, and Ricky said, I can't play pool if my hands are all sticky from there, It was the sugar. It was, and it wasn't that either. After he'd finished it, they weren't just sticky, he was licking his fingers, sucking his fingers off, and then was going to pick up pool cues and touch things, and I was thinking, go and wash your hands after licking your hands. You're not a cat. This turned into an argument when I said I didn't want to wash my hands. Why didn't he? Disgusting. He goes for a piss all the time without washing his hands, and then <laughs> squeezes my head. I know I prefer to have lemon cake crumbs on my head than knob juice. I was going to do a crossword, but I'm tired and have learnt enough today. What have you learnt? Well, the stuff about hedgehogs and that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Was on my way to my mates and I got on a train. Got close to a station but realised I needed a wee. Was about to go in a cubicle when a blind man with a dog who was bumbling his way through the walkway came around. I said, are you after the toilet? He said, yeah. I said, it's on your right. I shouldn't have let him go first, as he took ages, and it would be my stop soon. The dog waited outside the cubicle. I was going to stroke it, but then I remembered someone telling me that you shouldn't. Don't know why, why not. That is. Because something to do with uh, the owner should be the only one who who sort of deals with that dog, and you shouldn't. F sort well, you of... shouldn't stroke it because you'll cover it in fucking lemon cake. <laughs> no, but, but just because you know, if you if you stroke it and that, it it might like like me and want to go off with me, and he'll come out and be lost and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not totally sure, but I just thought... Are you not... Uh... The Ricky Gervais Show on Guardian Unlimited. A few people have sent this in, including Paul the Party Animal Parker. I wonder if um, anyone else in his school... I mean, for some reason we've just assumed he's in school. I don't think there's any actual proof of that. But do I, you reckon, think... I reckon he left in June and he's doing sort of bits and pieces, but he's still not a party animal. Do you think, I mean, do you think he can hold down a job? Is he just partying so hard that... He can hold down a job, um, he often arrives late. Sure. And the, and the boss, who's in over, will go, Parker, you're late again! He goes, yeah, talk to the hand. Yeah. I think that he's the sort of guy that he, you know, he'll just happily say, listen, I can, I survive on four hours sleep. Yeah. Sometimes I go to work, I've never slept at all. But I think he comes in with his, uh, uh, uh headphones blaring, right, on a, 
on a skateboard, yeah. and the bloke goes up to him, the old bloke, right, the old fuddy-duddy bloke, goes, you, you stupid idiot, you can't, there, 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 he, goes, he goes, chill out, man, and in two minutes, he's got him dancing. <laughs> oh, I know what he's like. <laughs> yeah, he is just like, he just can't resist it, because he's yeah. just, he's, he's just a fun guy. Yeah. Anyway, Paul, uh, and a few other people have sent in this piece of information they've discovered, um, from one of the more respected news networks. Um, the headline is this, female kidney turns lumberjack onto housework. Right. Now, a Croatian lumberjack, apparently, has claimed that he started enjoying housework and knitting after he was given a female kidney. He claims he's going to sue his local health authority because he says he's become a laughing stock. Um, he used to enjoy heavy drinking sessions and things. Uh, the kidney transplant saved his life, but they never warned me about the side effects. I've developed a strange passion for female jobs, like ironing, sewing, washing dishes, sorting clothes in wardrobes, and even knitting. Well, if he likes it, what's the problem? It's nonsense. Yeah. It's nonsense. Hold on, though. What makes me laugh is he's become a laughing stock. So what do you do when you become a laughing stock? Tell the newspapers. <laughs> well, yeah. Tell the newspapers about it, because then that would keep it completely under wraps. Then. But it's the sort of medical nonsense that Carl would normally come out with. Absolutely. That, the, the, you know, you take on the personality of the person who gave you their blood. <laughs> exactly. It's like those old sto horror stories, you know, you get given a murderer's hand. Yeah. And you go around killing. But, but there can be certain medical things that would change the way you think and would change you as, as a person. Say like how they can do um, face transplants now. Yeah. Right? I mean, I, I don't quite understand how this face transplants work because do you get a choice of who, who you have? If if you have something done to your face and you go, you know, it's burnt or whatever or something happens to you and you need well, a people, face transplant. Well, if you, change, if you totally changed your appearance, then you would eventually change because of how people reacted to you. Yeah, but I, So I mean, if you gave yourself the head of an elephant, soon you wouldn't, you wouldn't be yourself because of I wouldn't of the, have it. I wouldn't have that. That's what I'm saying. If they had a catalogue yeah. and they said, here's some faces you can have, pick which one you want. Yeah. Would you be looked upon badly if you go, do you know what? I don't really like the look of any of them. Can I just wait for a better face? Or at this moment in time, have you just got to take what's on offer? Carl, there's no one looking through catalogues at faces they might be able to have in no, the No, they face do now because of the face transplant thing. But who are these people putting their face up for? Uh, they wait till someone. Yeah, I know, but at some point. Well, I tell you what, I would not have a face transplant if I haven't seen the face before I'm going to have it. You. <laughs> you had to. <laughs> I want to see what I'm having. Because I could end up with anything. You mentioned elephant's head. What, do you know what I mean? Whose head are they going to use? Is it the latest thing that's died? Oh, well, this got run over before. Yeah, I'll stick this on your head. But <laughs> where did this come from? Where are his mind? Where, where are his faces queuing up to be popped on a skull? Where do you think they have got time to, to put well, all these... Maybe this is why it won't catch on. I don't know. <laughs> this is extraordinary. You've created in your own head the existence of this pamphlet, and now you're defending it even though we don't know it even exists. And you're this skull on a, on a hospital bed going, I'm not having that, I don't like the look of him, he looks a bit shifty, oh, I don't like that, oh no. Can I ask this now? Let's say you, we were both, we passed away sadly in something terribly tragic. Um, the nation's it mourned, you know, it's, it's terrible, it's like one of the great national disasters. But you, at the same time, you survived the accident, okay, but your face is hideously disfigured. You can take either Ricky's face or mine. To have. I'm surprised you're asking this though, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, it's just, it doesn't seem like any of them is like a great option. Oh, thanks. And this is what I'm saying about the catalogue. If, th if those two were on offer, I might go, do you know what? Pop in again tomorrow. Bring in another book. <laughs> <laughs> the Ricky Gervais Show on Guardian Unlimited. This is from Anne Marie Melvin in Amsterdam. She says that she loves the podcast. She listens with her seven months old baby. Um, that cannot be a good idea. And she says this to you, Carl. If you had children, what is the most important lesson you'd want to teach them? Uh, I mean, in a way, if you sort of look after a kid too much, it doesn't learn that much. But if you let it learn by its mistakes, It'll probably grow up all right. But there are it's some like, mistakes you can't afford it to make to learn from. Yeah. Driving a car ro the wrong way down a motorway. Um, test testing if the fire really is hot. No, but say like the time... Does, does broken glass really taste horrible? These are lessons you don't want it to learn from mistakes. Yeah, you can tell them that. But, yeah, but, what that I mean is, but what I mean is there's, there's certain things that... I, I just think there was a kid who grew up in our, in our avenue, right, on the estate, who... When it was born, right, we kind of thought it's got no chance, this kid, because its man was, was a bit of a rumman. 
Um, you know, a woman. D- Where, where's that? No, just just like you know, she like going out and having a fag and like having a drink, and she's never at home. It's the one who had the the horse in the house. Sure. Right? Which I don't want to go over. Sure. It's old news. It's yeah. out there, isn't it? If you want to find out about the horse in the house. <laughs> but uh, she had a kid, and everyone was pretty surprised when they saw it because it was a good-looking kid. Yeah. Right? Which was a surprise because, like, you know, the man wasn't that good looking, the dad was a bit rough. But mm. it, it came out and she was showing it around, around the avenue, going, Look at this, I've had. And <laughs> she, was, she was chuffed with it because it's probably like one of the newest things she's ever had because everything else was always sort of second hand and what yeah. have you. But suddenly she's got this brand new little baby, right? Anyway, as it grew up, right, those looks went. <laughs> right. And I'm not talking getting old, I'm talking by the age of about three. <laughs> 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 It looked, <laughs> it looked rough already, right? And all that, that just happened because that's, that's the life it was in, right? Yeah. So, like, it, it used to, it had, like, a patchy head. Um, it's a... It, it what? It had a patchy head? A patchy head. It's just sort of, uh, sort it of wasn't, it, it, it wasn't a North American Indian. What do you mean, a uh, patchy head? Just, just his hair was patchy. He used to chase, sort of, cars and stuff. <laughs> It's, Sorry, it's, what, what do you mean? It's just that's what he did for his. The, Sorry, did she let it get raised by wolves? <laughs> no, <laughs> but, but all I'm saying is that at the end of the day, what is it that makes a person? Do you know what I mean? Now I don't know what state he's in now, but maybe he learned all his mistakes by the age of four. I'm guessing he's not chasing cars now, but at least he's done it. I'm <laughs> guessing he is. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? At least he can go. Yeah, I've been there, done that, and you don't go back to it, and you can get away with doing dafter things when you're a kid. Can't you? I nearly killed a man once, right? <laughs> oh, okay, right. Did no, you? that time when I was in, in Wales <laughs> and I was having a walk with my dad on the cliffs and that. Yeah. I just picked up a big rock, right? Chucked it off the edge and as I chucked it off the edge, I noticed the fellow was walking down below. Jeez. And I missed his head by like inches. Now, I've never chucked a rock off a bridge or like off a cliff or anything. And right? it only took one man to almost lose his life. For you to learn that lesson. Yeah, but that's how you learn your lessons, yeah. isn't it? See, a lot of people would have said that maybe your dad should have said, Hey, Carl, what are you doing? No, but he didn't know I was doing it. I didn't say I'm going to chuck this off here. I just picked it up and chucked it. And, like, as I let go of it, I noticed a fellow was down there. You live and you learn. <laughs> that's a little mantra. Right? All right. You live okay. and you learn. So the woman who's had the kid, sort of look after it, feed it, <laughs> make sure it's got shoes and that. <laughs> but let it roam about. <laughs> Right. There's the advice for you, Anne Marie. I love that. Good luck. Just let your seven month old baby roam about. <laughs> Carl, a lot of people are absolutely fascinated to find out how you met uh, Suzanne, your girlfriend of how long? Uh, ages. Yeah. Um, and they just they they can't comprehend how. Well, I suppose that there's any woman out there. Well, there's someone Who for everyone, isn't there? Yeah. That's always my, my thing. And it's reassuring, I think. You know, we've chatted about the face transplants and that. You know, there's a face for everyone. Philosophy, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, it's really unbelievable. No, there is someone for everyone, no matter what, what yeah. condition you're in or whatever. Yeah. Because um, there's a... I read on the email, someone emailed in an old Chinese proverb. Um, is it old, though? <laughs> You know the Chinese proverbs don't age well. Um, it's something about uh, oh, everyone, everything, no matter what it is, has got one talent, right? And that's the same way in a relationship, in it that everyone, you know, there's always someone out there, and that I like the Chinese. There's another Chinese proverb that I learned on, on an email. Go on. Um, he who cuts the wood up. Warms himself twice. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Yeah. And then someone sent in that one about um, too many Chinese cooks spoil the broth. What, well, why is, well, that's, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know who slipped the word Chinese in there, but <laughs> I heard it was too many cooks. Well, it was all, it was just all sort of Chinese proverbs and that. One of my favourite um, uh, 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 on the same subject is um, a camel is a horse designed by committee. What do you mean? Well, it, I mean, it's having a go at the camel, and it shouldn't. But it's just, you know, it's just, it's just a metaphor. And if you wanted to design a horse, and you had that vision, but you let you let twelve people in the room have their say, it wouldn't come out as you wanted it to do, and it wouldn't be as good. A vision is more perfect than committee, because 
everyone having their say, it becomes anodyne, it becomes compromised. Whereas the best things you can do is have an idea and have a vision and auteur that. Rick, can I just say now, I can tell from his look that he's thinking, which committee designed the camel? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd just say, I'd say, who, who, why would you request the ump bit? Because <laughs> that's just going to get in the way, isn't it? This is, it. I mean, I've always, I've always said that about a lot of animals. It's like we, we've doubled up on a lot of them. We've chatted about elephants and mammoths, one or the other. <laughs> and that's the same with a, with a camel. I'd have that up there as what what they're doing. They were good years ago in the Jesus times and that. Don't need them now. You know what I mean? We've moved on. We've moved on. Well, not people who use camels to cross deserts. What other? I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna throw some animals at you, and you tell how, how, how you'd have improved them if you'd have been designing them. Okay. Mm -hmm. The octopus. So I, I can now go back. I can look at them and go, "What are they doing?" And wh wh where have they gone wrong? What's up with you? Wh wh how could you improve it? Like the camel, you go lose the ump. I'd probably, I'd probably give it a bit more of a body. <laughs> cut down on the arms. Um, and and give it some bones because I don't understand all this. It getting in a jar is is good. When does it want to get in a jar? It says- Well, it only wants to get in a jar according to your stories. <laughs> no, but there's something that says it can get in a jar because it hasn't got any bones, but yeah. I don't know why it'd want to do that in the first place. <laughs> I can't even begin to answer that. Once again, you've- you've said- you've claimed that you've read that they like to get in jars. I mean, how do they know that octopus like to get in jars? <laughs> oh god, I love it. You can improve on an octopus. Millions and millions of years of evolution making it perfect for its surroundings. Okay, another animal for you then, Carl. Um, uh, giraffe? Um, what what are they adding to to the world? What are they doing? Well, it's not about what they add to the world. No, but, is I, thought, it? but I thought that's what everything's about. It's about things are here for a reason. Well, they, well, they no, because they work. The, the only reason is that they survived. They passed on their genetic material and evolved and was chosen by by nature. It was but selected. There, but there seems to be a lot. The, the, of... the reason they're here is because they didn't die. That's it. No, but there seem to be a lot of animals that are like. Do you think there's a lot of cheating? Is that what you're saying? Well, there's I'm a just lot saying of doubling there just seems up. to be a lot of doubling up. Yeah. So and you want you want you you two, you'd get it down to like eight animals that represented all of them. So um, okay, who would get in your in your team? You can choose no, eight well, this animals. Is, this is what I'm saying. If I was Noah, I mm. would have gone like, hang on a minute. With I've just seen something that looks a bit like this. <laughs> <laughs> Let it drown, and have a clear out. <laughs> but he didn't. He was messing about saving everything. He was instructed by God to save everything, yeah. to be fair to him. Yeah, but if he's been given that job, for me, he's sort of manager of that job. So you, be so you believe with Noah management. as well? You well, believe you believe Noah happened as well, and he built a boat big enough to, to catch two of every species? You actually believe that as fact, dear? Well, it's, it's out there in book form. Brilliant. Uh, all right. We haven't answered the question that we started with. How did you meet Suzanne? Does that work? Thanks. Oh, chimpanzee, that monkey! You! There was this um, airline, and um, it was having a lot of problems. And, and a what? Lot of pilots too tall? Yeah, the cabin was so tiny. Only bananas were allowed in the cockpit for fuel. <laughs> anyway, yeah. there, there was a lot of strikes going on, right? Sure. Because. Um, I don't know what it was about. It was over money or whatever. Yes. And the well, get get someone that doesn't need money. <laughs> yeah, but but well, but what else could you pay something in? Well, Rick, I mean, peanuts. Anyone, but, so, okay, peanuts or, or fruit. Yeah. So anyway, the the boss of the airline, the, oh. he had like one pilot who he could trust, right? And that was his son. Right. Mm. But the problem is with a lot of these planes, mm. you need two pilots. Of course right? you do. And he's like, if only I had two sons, but he didn't. There's no point harping on about it. Right? Sure. As, is it, as, this a, he runs a airline. He runs an airline, yeah. But how many pilots are there? Because there must be loads. No, there's loads, but the problem is a lot of them are going on strike. Oh. And each week you can see that we're well, struggling here. We but how can they get, but if they, yeah, but it's just, it was just the pilots that were striking, was it? Yeah, the pilots were striking, yeah. So the, all the ground staff and luggage handlers and all that was okay in the care They, they were fine, it's just pilots right. were, were not pilots. happy with the deal and what have you. Yeah. Well, just, just close it down. No, no way, you can't do that, no, can't, Of course you can. It's costing them a fortune just, if he closes it down. Yeah, yeah but what, one plane's not going to make a difference in an airline, is it? No, 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 it's oh, all the planes. It's all the planes, mate. Yeah, I know, exactly, so if he's only got one person you can trust, <laughs> knock it on the head. No, 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 <laughs> no, what's the point? You've got to keep going. You can't just nip stuff in the bud like that. If, you, if you've got a dream, keep it alive. I know, but not with one plane and your son. So anyway. I don't know. But that's the least of his problems, Rick, because he's got 
got his son, who's a brilliant pilot, he's the only guy he can trust, but it, it takes two people to fly. Well, you the can't plane. fly it then. So, the son, he's mm. flying the planes and that, he's getting worried for his dad because of his business, it's falling sure. apart. He's like, anyway, listen. Well, one plane won't make any difference. Don't worry it? about it, we've found someone who you can work with. Okay. Um, and he's like, but I, I get past the picket line because, you know, they know I'm your son anyway and they'll leave me alone, but any other pilot, they're going to start giving him grief. They're tearing him to shreds, yeah. He said, don't worry about it. Unless he could swing over the heads of all the strikers. He said he's staying over near the sort of quarantine area where oh, all yeah. the animals are kept oh, and yeah, stuff. Right, okay. They won't be looking in there, they won't no. bother. No. So he's like, all right. Uh, well, there's no animal you. that could be a co-pilot, that's why. I'll see you, uh, he'll meet up with you in the cockpit. Right. He'll meet up in the cockpit, yeah, sure. So anyway, he gets in there, he meets them. At first, a little bit of a shock who he's going to be working with, but why? he's thinking, as long as I can keep my dad's business alive, I can Not keep a job. Not with one plane. Not so, with one plane. anyway, what happens is, the strike's going on, he's flying, he's yeah. got his mate with him flying, helping out. Who's his mate? What's his the mate's flights, name? The flights are brilliant, right? Everybody's loving them, they can't believe how smooth they are. Sure. The, mm. You know, the shares are going through the roof, everybody's like, what? Oh, to because fly. this plane. one plane, this oh, one plane one they've plane, got. one plane, that would make any difference! Everyone's saying, you know, it's a, it's only a small plane, but it's worth getting on there. And it's a can. small plane sure, as well. Because it's a great, it's a great oh, experience. gone under, I'd have thought. There's so no anyway, way they can keep that... Alive. Apparently they can. So they're keeping yeah. this, uh, this plane up in the air and what have you, and everybody's, yeah. you know, booking the holidays. It's almost like the favourite bit of the holiday, they're loving the flights that much. Why? It's just, because, because it's really good flights. It's a great, I don't it's a great flight. What difference? Apparently it's a great flight. It it's makes. Just, it's so, so anyway, anyway, what difference it makes. Everyone's happy. Then one day mm. what happens is a little bit of, uh, a bit of a problem. Oh uh, dear. You're not, you're not gonna tell us that, that sort of co, co-pilot Coco is, he's not able to make it to work, is he? Well, well, what well, happened is, uh, one woman who was on the, on the plane got a bit peckish, right? Right. And said, uh, said to the air host, this woman said, I'm a little bit peckish, have you got any sort of nibbles and that? She went, uh, no, I've got, got a sandwich. She said, I don't really want a sandwich, you want something, you know, like the usual stuff that planes give out, just like no, a bag of nuts or something. Well, nuts, are yeah. they not giving those out yet? So, no, they don't give it, for some reason, she was like, look, we've, <laughs> we've stopped giving out the nuts, we can get you That's a sandwich, strange. and the woman's yeah. like, I don't want a sandwich, yeah. I just want some nuts, yeah, do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. A sandwich is quite a big meal, and I just yeah. want some nibbles, want some nuts. Well, it's not, that's not available. So Done. I can't, End the story. Can't get you nuts. She said, well, why aren't there any nuts? She said, well, you know, the airlines had problems and stuff, and maybe that was one of the cutbacks, we've never took the nuts back on. Yeah, sure. So, she wouldn't just leave it, she wanted her nuts, right? She's having a lovely flight and everything, she said, I can't, cannot complain about the flight, the <laughs> no, flight sure. is brilliant. Yeah. Whoever's yeah. up there flying this plane is doing she's, a dynamite job. She's doing job. a great job, but I need some nuts. Right. Anyway, so the woman there said, aren't there aren't Very any demanding nuts. woman. There aren't any. It's a very demanding woman. There aren't any. Look, she's paid big money, right, she's probably in first class, she wants nuts, she's gonna nah, get nuts. there aren't any, leave it. Leave if she it. has to force her way into the cabin to get nuts, she's gonna get well, nuts. Well, she can't go there because she'll be shot. Because so with, with, with security problems and that, there's no way she could ever go to the cockpit. That, it, that would never happen. So she said, well, you're saying there aren't any nuts. She yeah. said, but earlier, I saw you put a tray outside the cockpit, right? It had a sandwich on it, two Cokes, and two bags of nuts. Right. She said, so you're saying there aren't any, but the pilot's getting Well, there aren't any now. That was the last two packets. Done. No, no. So Let's go home. <laughs> So she's going, you can't, can't have any, no. We know, she's we going, understand now there's a dispute so, over that. So nuts. she said, she said, well, well I'm, I'll go and have a word with the pilot myself, because you only put them out there a few minutes ago. He can't have eaten well, them yet. I want you, some. You I'm going over. Go, no, no. I know this is it. This yeah. is, she was saying, you cannot go over. She's going, no. listen. Yeah. I'm going to go over because no, I feel no, like I'm being lied to. No, you can't. So she goes, so no, and, no and the way. pilot can well, hear all this get in anyway. chat about the nuts and what have you, and he's thinking, what's going on out there? Yeah. He opens the door. Yeah. She gets a glance in. Little monkey sat there with headphones. Fucking bollocks. Well, that's the end of another podcast. Um, do register on rickygervais.com. We will have an email you and tell you um, what's happening when we finish this run of podcasts. We might have um, some uh, downloads. At the moment, we're working on um, animating all the monkey newses. Um, so uh, look forward to that. The absolute bullshit that is monkey news in all its glory. Um, this was hosted by Positive Internet. Great guys. The great guys that host the world's number one podcast. Cheerio from me, Ricky Gervais, and Steve Merchant. Goodbye. And Carl Pilkington. Goodbye. The Ricky Gervais Show on Guardian Unlimited. Goodbye.